Hi, my name is Paivan Lukamhan. And I'm Adrian O'Rourke. We're here at the Barry Elks Lodge for the Vermont GOP's watch party here on election night. And we are going to watch the results come in, and we hope to get to talk to some folks that are here tonight. And we are thankful for Orca Media for providing the tech service today. Hi there, I'm Paivan Lukamhan. It is election night here in downtown Barrie. We are at the Elks Lodge, and this is the watch party for the Vermont GOP. Standing next to me is John Clark, candidate for the Senate in Orange County. Uh, do you want to say a few words, and how's it going tonight? Well, it's been a long haul, and I think we're all sort of excited to have it over with, for better or for worse. It's a very tiring ordeal. But I really want to reach out to thank all my supporters and everybody who runs, I mean, in this democratic process. It really is uh, a state where, where the tail can wag the dog and regular Vermonters can run and be involved and have a chance of winning. And I think maybe we'll take some seats tonight is my hope, oh, okay. whether or not I do. <laughs> um, well, you told me earlier that you're uh, new, quite new to politics. And tell us, you know, how you got into it and uh, what you hope to achieve as like an average citizen going into politics. Well, I got involved a few years ago just trying to shape a conservative message that was more moderate, more in between Phil Scott and Donald Trump for conservatives, and to try to appeal to Vermonters on conservative issues that would unify people rather than divide us. And I ran two years ago um, against Phil Scott, and we had almost 40 people run with me. Several of them won. And so that's kind of the foundation that I ran with. But it's kind of a, I've been called a rural populist, and I kind of like that. I mean, I know there are negative connotations to that. But I think people want authenticity, and they want people who, who they can trust. And that's, that's what brings me to the party as a person who was, before that, a Democrat for most of my life. So I'm kind of a walk away, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, and uh, if you do win this election, um, you've got two years. Uh, what do you hope to accomplish? Well, I think that we've got some real problems to tackle that require centrists from both the left and the right to come together. Um, and I've actually been outspoken in support of some Democrats who understand the fiscal problems facing us, particularly with our pensions. Our, our government's too big. Our schools are the second most expensive in the country as a function of our income. And our government's growing faster than the underlying economy. And we can't simply be dependent on tourism and handouts from the federal government as Vermonters. We need to rebuild our economy. And I believe that we can do that, believe it or not, not solely, but a lot with farming and building along those strengths. And even agritourism. I mean, our tourism industry as well is built on farming and we're losing our farms and not just our dairy farms so we have a huge opportunity with increased inflation and fertilizer and fuel costs to start exporting food again like way we did and and there's actually a huge business plan right there great as you heard me say <laughs> yes but we're talking to a whole new audience here um, and uh, what are your hopes for the Vermont GOP in general um, uh, so as as a party um, well, it's a good question. There's a, an increasing division on the left, uh, which we saw particularly in the Molly Gray, Becca Ballant race, but elsewhere, there's there's really a, an increasing division there. And in, on, the, on the right, there's been a division for some years, which is evidenced by Phil Scott and Donald Trump, who themselves have never exactly been allies. And so there's a middle there. And it has been my goal uh, for several years, and we're trying to see it take shape to form a GOP post Phil Scott post Donald Trump, not wishing death on anybody, but when those, person, those, those personalities are in the past, perhaps we can repair Vermont's GOP because it's created a real division. And nobody wants to, do, to donate to this party because either they hate Phil Scott and love Donald Trump or they hate Donald Trump and they love Phil Scott. So why would you give to the party that you, you see? So it's, it's created a real um, a hole in, in, in the conservatism. I believe in a two-party system. We've had essentially a progressive one-party system right now. I think we only have six Republican senators, maybe seven. That's not very balanced, and that's why we have such a, you know, the governor has been unable many times to resist veto overrides. So we need more balance. So that balance, I think, comes from a conservative party that's reshaped around a more centrist, traditionally conservative uh, list of platform issues. Any last words you want to uh, tell our... I love... I love public access television. I wish more people would produce for it, more people would get uh, involved watching it, and it's a huge opportunity because freedom of speech is the core of any sound and growing culture in society. 
So thank you for doing what you do. Oh, thank you for joining us. Um, I'll let you get back to your party. Thank you. I haven't even started my party. <laughs> thank you. Thank yep. you, guys. Uh, hey, everybody. Thanks, uh, thanks for coming out tonight. Uh, obviously, it's been a lo little over half an hour uh, since the polls have closed. Uh, so uh, I just want to thank, uh, thank you all. I know so many of you, uh, we've got some candidates here. We've had folks who have volunteered, uh, town chairs, county chairs. Uh, thank you guys uh, for, for coming out and doing all the work that has taken to get up to this point. Uh, so thank you. I, I'm excited. I think uh, tonight is going to be a good night for Republicans across the country. For sure. We are going to have a red wave. I think we look across the border at uh, New York and New Hampshire. Uh, some of these other Senate races, uh, there's a lot for Republicans to be excited about. Uh, the most important thing for us to be excited about is the food has been served. So if you haven't had a chance, make sure uh, you grab some of the appetizers. These have been prepared by the Vermont Young Republicans. We have an incredible, let's give them a round of applause. I know Sam, uh, Sam Douglas, uh, chair of the Vermont Republican, uh, Young Republicans, uh, offered uh, to do the food for tonight. So make sure you say uh, a quick thank you to him. Uh, and we're just going to be watching and waiting for results to come in. Uh, but also, we've got our uh, longtime Republican, uh, former uh, state legislator, uh, Tom Koch, wanted to make an announcement. So go ahead, Tom. Well, I have a tradition of reporting the results from Barrytown, which is often one of the first towns to report. And I hope that the, the returns from across the state are better than they are from Barrytown. I have some bad news to report. Uh, the Democrats put forth an Emerge Vermont candidate who had over $10,000 funded, mainly from Burlington. Um, she worked very hard um, around the town, I have to admit that. And the bad news is that we only beat her by 600 votes. Yay! So our new representative, well, uh, the top vote getter was Topper McFawn. And about 100 votes behind him was our new representative, Gina Galfetti, and I know she's going to do a super job. So uh, uh, that's the news from Barrytown. Also, Paul Bean did pretty well. He came in at third, actually, but that's understandable because we have a local candidate from Barrytown who came in first. Ann Cummings got uh, 1,839 votes. Paul Bean got 1,829 votes. So 10 votes behind Ann Cummings ain't too damn bad. So we're hopeful for, for Paul tonight. Um, I have the tape here. I haven't actually looked at all of it because I grabbed it and came down here. Joe Benning, 2224. David Zuckerman, 1316. Um, here's one that'll blow your socks off. Phil Scott, 3,040. Brenda Siegel, 458. So uh, it's a good start for the night. Let's hope we keep it up. Sorry for the bad news. <laughs> All right, so yeah, make sure uh, you grab uh, those are that is good news uh, to start. I, I joked with Tommy; he really had me going there for a minute. Um, but so that that's those are our first uh, two contested wins that we know about. Uh, Republicans keep the two seats in Barrytown, re-electing Topper McFawn and uh, also uh, electing Gina Galfetti to replace uh, Rob LeClaire. So there's our first two on the board. Uh, please, uh, we'll have some more music and uh, make sure you get some food. Uh, as we get more updates, we'll let you know. 
Good evening. I'm Paivan Lukamhan here at the Barry Elks Lodge in downtown Barry. We are at the Vermont GOP election night watch party. And standing next to me is Erica Reddit. And um, I'll let her introduce uh, herself and uh, tell me what office you're running for and what uh, you're looking forward to tonight. Yeah. Uh, oh, are you holding it? I'll hold it. Okay. Uh, my name is Erica Reddick. I am the Libertarian Party candidate for Congress. I also have the support and endorsement from the majority of the GOP apparatus here in Vermont, um, especially for folks who don't know uh, the young man who who does have the R behind his name is not actually a Republican, but uh, I was very blessed to also have received the Libertarian Party endorsement. And so um, the thing that I'm most excited about is that, um, you know, I would say, number one, the Libertarian Party is going to become a major party it here in Vermont tonight with my candidacy. So that's pretty exciting. So can you tell me a little bit more about the Libertarian Party and how it's different from the GOP? Yeah, great question. The Libertarian Party, much like the GOP, is very focused on liberty, right? So it's really about freedom, uh, bodily autonomy, and, um, and just making sure that the government is in the right place in its citizens' lives. So they tend to be a little bit more... Um, uh, focused on, you know, differently on social issues. So whereas the Libertarian Party has always been pro-gay marriage, uh, where the GOP was not previously, um, the Libertarian Party is also pro-cannabis. And so that's one thing that the GOP is not for. So they tend to be a little bit more liberal um, on social issues than the GOP does. That's probably the main difference. Okay. Um, and... Uh Remind me, which congressional seat are you running for? Um, well, Vermont, the Vermont U.S. House, U.S. Oh, right. House seat. Yeah, so Great. we just have the one. Um, and what um, what is uh, what was your motivation for running for that position? Great question. My motivation for running. F for Congress was just seeing our country running off of a cliff. Um, I'm an accountant by trade. That's what I've done for much of the last 20 years. So I knew that this inflation spike was coming when those uh, stimulus checks came out. Um, I knew what was going to happen to the supply chain when they started shutting down, um, you know, doing lockdowns and, and things like that. And and sure enough, it did happen. And then and then we see th that. Uh, you know, our leadership is is lying to us and saying, oh, no, inflation isn't there. It's transitory and, you know, all this other stuff. And you're like, uh, why are you not telling the American people the truth about what's going on and, uh, you know, selling our strategic oil reserve, you know, the botched uh, sure withdrawal from right Afghanistan? <laughs> I know. I was okay. like, so I just I feel like our current leadership while they may be well-intentioned, don't seem to understand the consequences of their decisions. And uh, and um, the American people deserve folks who, who are a little bit more stable and will take more caution and care before changing our institutions. Great. One last question. Let's keep it quick. Um, Cause I know, I know we got the, we got <laughs> the wrap up sign um, over here. So uh, the Congress is large and yeah. sometimes it moves really slowly yeah. and uh, sometimes it takes a while to make a name for yourself. What yeah. do you hope to accomplish in your first term if you get this uh, seat? I, my goal is going to be, I'm going to submit three uh, bills for consideration. One is going to be for term limits for federal officials. Another is going to be for a balanced budget, so no more deficit spending, you know, just running the black card for $6 trillion a year or whatever it is. Uh, and single issue bills. So instead of these 10,000 page omnibus spending packages that they just stuff stuff in, single issue bill, one appropriation, one topic. These are items that are bipartisan, that Democrats, progressives, and Republicans all across the board, libertarians, everyone agree that that's how you can help restore accountability, transparency, and integrity to Washington. Thank you so much. We've been talking with Erica Reddick, who is on the ballot for the U.S. House in Congress. Uh, thank you so much for yeah, joining us. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Have, Have a good tonight. night. Yes. Bye, guys.
Hi there, it's Paivan Lukaman here at the Barry Elks Lodge in downtown Barry. We are at the Vermont GOP election watch party. I'm standing here with Paul Dame, chair of the Vermont GOP. And um, the polls have closed and the results are trickling in. Can you tell me what we've got, what we've seen so far? Yeah, so far the uh, the first only results that we have are from Barry Town, uh, where we had uh, Representative Topper McFawn running for re-election and uh, his previous seatmate, Rob LeClaire, had retired. Uh, so we had a new Republican running in that race, uh, Gina Galfetti, and Gina was successful. So Republicans have retained that second seat in Barrytown. So the, the first news of the night is good news. So we just hope that, uh, that it keeps coming. Oh, great. Um, I heard from my co-host over there that um, both Topper and Gina were doing a pretty um, rigorous door-to-door uh, -door canvas campaign. Yeah, that's really what we recommend for all of our candidates. Uh, it's, it's the best way to make sure that you get to know your district and the people that you're representing and making sure that you're able to, to listen to what their concerns are so that you know how to represent them. And that's something that Topper McFawn has been doing for, for years. And so it's been great in that two-seat district to have an established veteran like Topper who knows the area, um, uh, he knows the legislature, and to have Gina kind of come in working with with Topper uh, to, to, to reproduce those results that are working for him. Yeah, so um, as the night rolls on, um, what other major or uh, what other uh, races are you really keeping a keen eye on? Yeah, I, th I think we're, we're keeping an eye on certainly a couple of our incumbents, um, like uh, like Vicki Strong up in Orleans or uh, Samantha Lefebvre, uh, who's, who's here tonight, to make sure that we keep the Republicans that we have uh, that have been in there. Uh, and then we're also looking to, to kind of expand the map. Uh, I think there's a couple opportunities we have up in Franklin County uh, with a, a new Fairfax, Georgia district uh, that has, um, uh, you know, Carolyn Brannigan coming back and, uh, and Ashley Bartley. Uh, so, uh, and we're keeping an eye, uh, you know, here in Washington County on Paul Bean. He ran a very uh, uh, vigorous uh, campaign for state Senate. Uh, and in Washington County, you get to vote for three. So we're hoping that Despite the fact there are two incumbent Democrats, there's an open seat. We're hoping that Paul, as a younger uh, Vermonter, is able to get in and, uh, and be a, a voice for younger Vermonters in the Vermont Senate. I've seen quite a lot of his signs around. Yeah. yeah, so let's touch back on something you were talking about, um, this new district. How has redistricting affected uh, the campaigning? Uh, well, in some places, it, uh, the districts you know look very similar to what they had before. So in some places, there's not large changes. Uh, in other places, especially as you get into Chittenden County, where more of the population is, we had to do some redistricting because there's more people living there, so they need more reps. And then the other side of that is places uh, like the Northeast Kingdom, uh, Caledonia, Orleans, Essex County, lost some representation. So that has meant kind of moving the map around a little bit. Uh, in some places, uh, you know, there's probably one place that's created an opportunity for Republicans in the Senate. Uh, it looks like we, we've got a good chance of getting a Republican uh, Senate uh, candidate uh, out of this new district uh, around Milton. Uh, and then in some other places, uh, you know, it's uh, it, it certainly hurt us. A uh, place uh, like Vicki Strong, I mentioned before, uh, we kind of cut that district in half and cut Vicki off from some of the support that she's enjoyed for almost 12 years as a state rep up there. Yeah, so um, it looks like there's a pretty dedicated crowd here. What do you think about, uh, or how are you as the chair, um, uh, cultivating the next, uh, the future of the GOP here in Vermont? Well, I, I think, uh, you know, the future starts now. And so we're going to take uh, whatever the results are here tonight, uh, you know, take a careful look at those to, to identify where uh, we had some, uh, you know, some good candidates and good districts, uh, where maybe we came short a little bit and try to, to start looking for uh, high quality candidates uh, in, in, in more districts. That's one of the, the downsides we've had this year. Uh, we didn't. We just didn't recruit as many candidates uh, as I would have liked, and um, and so that that's something that, that we've got to start on uh, right away, looking at 2024.
What do you find people are attracted to with the GOP, and so why would they enroll to to run? Yeah, I think uh, some of the things that, that we've heard is just uh, the cost of living is just getting very difficult in Vermont. Uh, a lot of people just having a hard time filling their uh, their gas tank, uh, you know, filling their their home heating tank. Um, uh, you know, just concerns about about taxes, affordability uh, in general, and those are the kind of folks who have been looking to get involved in the Republican Party uh, to be a little bit more of a balancing force uh, in, in Montpelier. Anything else you want to say as we get back to uh, watching the election results? Uh, no, I think we're, we'll keep an eye on uh, results as they come in. And, uh, and thanks again for, for being here. Absolutely. Thank you. We've been talking with uh, Paul Dames, chair of the Vermont GOP. And we're here in downtown Barrie at the Elks Lodge. And we're watching the results roll in. So thanks for joining us. All right, I've got uh, results from uh, from two more races, uh, some good news and some bad news. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Tom Kelly was not able to secure a seat here in Barrie City. So the Democrats have retained both of those seats. Uh, incumbent uh, Peter Anthony won that one, and we weren't able to flip that seat. Uh, on uh, The good news is uh, Penny DeMar won in Franklin 7, uh, and Republicans have retained that seat uh, where uh, Felicia Leffler uh, had retired. So uh, both, uh, both parties uh, basically uh, at a draw there, uh, retaining the seats of, uh, of vacancies. So that's all we've got so far. Well, we got some more news out of Franklin County uh, in the brand new uh, Georgia Fairfax district. Uh, Republicans picked up a seat. And we've got Carolyn Brannigan and Ashley Bartley. And that was a seat that was held by an independent uh, and now is in Republican control. So that's our first pickup of the night.